Welcome to Engineer Your Space. I'm Isabelle LaRue, and today I'm in a Manhattan studio apartment. It's actually a really large space, big enough for a full-size sofa and a king-size bed. Not bad for New York. Now the challenge with this space, like with most studios, is the fact that there really isn't any visual separation between the living area where I'm standing in right now and the bedroom over there. Now I'm going to show you this really neat solution from IKEA. It's a track system that you install on the ceiling, and you can hang panels or curtains from it. Now the plan for this apartment is to create a wall behind the sofa by hanging panels and then creating a corner with curtains that are also going to frame up the windows of the back wall. It's really going to give the studio apartment a nice and cozy separate living room. I have a few tricks to show you that's going to make installing this really easy. I can't wait to show you, so let's get started. The very first thing you want to do is mark on the floor with masking tape where you want your panels to hang. And that's going to give you a reference point for the location of the rails on the ceiling. This hanging system that I'm using from IKEA is called Kvartal, and it gives you the option of using a triple rail like this one, or a single rail like this one here. Both can be used with panels or curtains, but the thing with a single rail is that if you were to use panels with it, you would have to move them all together at the same time. With the triple rail, you can put the panels on different tracks, and it gives you the option of collapsing them one up behind the other, and it makes it really easy to open up or close up your panels anytime you want. So I'm going to use two triple track rails behind the sofa to hang panels and then two single track rails on the back wall to hang curtains. And I'm going to connect the two with a single track rail corner piece. The supports will go at the far ends of the rails and in the middle where they connect. These rails come in 55 inch lengths, but you can cut them any size you want um, really easily using a miter box and a hacksaw. You can get that at any hardware store or they even sell them at Ikea. Now to hang these rails onto the ceiling, you need to use these little supports provided by Ikea, of course. This part goes onto the ceiling and this little guy here just goes into the rail like this. To join the two rails together, it's actually really easy with this piece that comes with the system. You just have to make sure that the screws here are nice and flush with the bottom, and then it makes it really easy to just slide in one rail like this. Then you tighten the screws, put in the support, and then slide the other rail in and tighten the screws. Now that's about it for the rails. Now comes the fun part, installing the supports onto the ceiling. Now you can follow the instructions from IKEA but I've come up with a different way to do it that I think is a little bit easier. And the first thing you want to do is mark off onto the tape where each of the ceiling supports are going to be. And you can use the rails as your guide for this. The supports on the ceiling need to line up exactly with the ones on the rails at the joints. Now the challenge is to transfer those marks from the floor onto the ceiling exactly in the same spot so that our panels hang exactly where we want them in a perfectly straight line. Now to do that, I'm going to use this plumb bob here, or plumb line. And it's actually really easy to use. Holding the string on the ceiling, you move it around until the point where the plumb bob hangs exactly over the mark for the support. When it's perfectly aligned and still, then you want to mark the spot on the ceiling. I'm going to go mark off the spots for the supports, and then I'm going to show you how to install them. I'm ready to put in the ceiling supports. Now they don't come with any hanging hardware, so you have to make sure that you get the right kind for your type of ceiling. And if you don't know what to get, just ask someone from your local hardware store, and they'll point you in the right direction. The other thing you have to think about is what type of drill to use. If you're drilling into drywall, you can use a standard drill. But if you're drilling into concrete like I am, you're going to need to use a hammer drill like this one. You can always rent one if you don't have one. And before I start drilling, I like to mark with masking tape on my drill bit how far I need to drill. That way, I know when I'm done drilling. So here goes. Start drilling the holes for the two end supports first. Before you drill the hole to put in your middle support, it's a good idea to double check that the mark that you made is perfectly in line with the two holes that you just drilled at the ends. If the alignment is off just a little bit, it will make installing the middle support really difficult. I use a laser to check this, it's really easy, and there's even some lasers that will stay on the ceiling on their own if you're working by yourself. After all your holes are drilled, then you finish putting in the supports. I'm going to finish installing the other supports and putting up the rails, and then I'm going to show you a couple of tricks on how to put together the curtain panels. Putting up the rails is most definitely a two-person job, so make sure you get a helper. Mine was a bit camera shy, so that's why you don't see them. 
putting together the curtain panels is actually really straightforward. All you're going to need is a top and bottom rail like these and then of course the material for your panel. I got mine at Ikea and this is a pretty opaque one which is what I wanted. But you can get one in different colors, some that are more transparent, some with patterns. And of course you can use your own fabric. It's really up to you. Now make sure when you're cutting the panel to length that you do it in a really straight line. And that's going to make sure that your panel hangs nice and straight. Now one thing that I do a little bit differently than what the IKEA instructions calls for is I leave the adhesive strip here covered and that way if I ever want to change out my panel it'll be really easy to do that. Now because I leave this on uh, the way I put it together is a little bit different. I put the inside rail just at the edge but leaving enough fabric to cover it like this. I just fold it over and then when I take um, the outside piece of the bottom rail I just kind of starting at the edge, slide it over like that and then making sure that the fabric stays in place, I just kind of make it fit in snugly like that. And you want to make sure that the holes of the top and bottom rail are facing the same side. Now there's a few little other pieces that you need to add to these, but IKEA explains it really well in their instructions. So I'm going to finish putting together the panels, put them up, put up the curtains, and then I'll be ready to show you the finished room. Can't wait! Wow, what a transformation. You can't even recognize this apartment anymore. Now there's a well-defined living room completely separate from the bedroom over there. And the panels here really do act like a wall. Now not only is there a visual separation between the living room and the bedroom, there's also room to hang artwork. I attached the artwork to a top rail with S-hooks that I made from paper clips and they go through the existing holes of the rail and then use another S-hook to attach the artwork. Then I place the rail on the front track and that way if you want to watch TV from the bedroom all you have to do is open up the panels, move the art and you're good to go. Now I did mount the artwork on a foam board to keep things light because I didn't want to add too much weight to the track. So if you want to hang something a little bit heavier I'd recommend installing a single track in front of the one that you've just installed just to hang the artwork. I also added a pendant light here in the corner to add a little bit of ambiance and I'm going to show you how to make one of those in an upcoming episode. Well that's it for today's show, I hope you've enjoyed it and if you want more information about this project and other DIY inspiration, go to engineeryourspace.com and don't forget to join me on Facebook and Twitter. See you next time. <laughs>